And joining us for now for more is Dr. Yasmin Maor, head of the Infectious Disease Unit at Wilson Medical Center, and she's speaking to us from Halon. Dr. Moore, thanks for joining us. First of all, let me ask you about this alarming prediction of a thousand uh, new uh, cases per day, which could be 10 days from now. I noticed today the number, today's uh, most recent figure is slightly lower than the previous few days. So uh, in your view, is that uh, almost predetermined we're going to go to a thousand or some of the efforts that we're seeing on the vaccination and preventive side have a chance at least of uh, keeping the number significantly below that? I really hope that the vaccination efforts will help us to reduce the numbers, but there's also always a delay between people who uh, catch the virus and the time that we can diagnose it. So uh, usually we see the effect only after a week or 10 days for the various efforts. So I don't know if we're going to reach a thousand, but I do think that we will see a certain increase in the coming days. But um, the, uh, the whole situation today is very different than the rise that we saw at uh, the previous uh, outbursts because of the issue of the vaccination and because uh, we know that most of the people who are vaccinated, even if they become positive, even if they have mild symptoms, they will not need to be hospitalized and they will not suffer from the serious complications that are related to corona. Right, so let me ask you in that regard, if we're not, um, uh, I won't say panicking, but maybe uh, we should keep this in proportion because we're seeing a lot of these cases, unvaccinated minors who really aren't showing many symptoms. As you said, many of the uh, people that would be more at risk, uh, the elderly, uh, people with secondary conditions, they've been vaccinated. Uh, and so perhaps uh, this, we should keep this in perspective, not be overly concerned about this. Yes, yeah, so I think on the one hand, we should keep it in perspective. But on the other hand, we need to remember the law of the big numbers. If we have a huge population that is infected, so we know that uh, vaccine effectiveness uh, regarding hospitalization is about 92%. So uh, if, if it's very big numbers, so 8% may be a big number to see people who, and also we have a portion of the uh, population that still is not vaccination vaccinated. So we're talking about children and youngsters, but we also need to remember that some of the adults also refused to vaccinate and they are still at risk. And we have uh, certain populations like immune compromised people who, despite the fact that they were vaccinated, the vaccine efficacy in this population is lower. So I think we, we need to be optimistic and there's good reason to be optimistic, but also we need to do our best to try and decrease the numbers. Right now, uh, we heard in uh, the report we just had Professor Nadav Davidovich talk about the airport in particular, concern, you know, uh, speaking to concerns that maybe it has to, if it's going to be after be shut down and politics shouldn't interfere. But I think a lot of people are really struck by the fact that flights are still coming in from these so-called red countries, where the government is telling Israelis not to travel to these countries, but they're still allowing flights. Uh, should the flights, at least to these so-called red countries, simply be halted for the time being? So my personal opinion is that at least to the very high risk countries, flights should be halted. But on the other hand, I think we need to remember that the reason we vaccinated the population is in order to be able to have some sort of decent life with Corona. The expectation of Corona to disappear completely is not realistic. It's going to be uh, an ongoing thing for several years because we cannot isolate Israel completely from the entire world. And we know that in many countries, the vaccination programs are uh, either um, not as uh, um, pronounced and also some countries cannot afford to buy vaccines. If we look at the third world countries. So uh, the issue of Corona in the world is going to take time to decline. And I think it's not realistic to close the country completely now for several years. So again, I think we need to have a differential attitude. It's, uh, there are the very high risk countries and the other places. Fair enough. And what and we about need to, to, to make better uh, adjustments and better uh, regulations in the airport? Right. Definitely. Uh, one other measure, the Green Pass system uh, that was suspended. Do you think it's time to bring it back? 
I think it's a good possibility because the Green Pass uh, does two things. On the one hand, it uh, um, um, makes it more difficult for people who are not vaccinated and they are at higher risk for getting infected and also infecting other people. So uh, it decreases our contact with these people. And I think it's also an incentive to go and get vaccinated if there's some things that as an unvaccinated person, it's difficult for you to do. So uh, I think if we will continue to see the rise in, uh, in new cases, I think it's something that we do need to consider again. All right. And of course, the real answer, which should be that people, especially adults who for whatever reason have not been vaccinated yet, should go get those shots now. Uh, if I can just add another word, uh, I think uh, again we see the, the thing of uh, uh, people um, uh, working with, with the guidelines. If people will do uh, more to work with the guidelines, we will need less strict regulations. Okay. Dr. Yasmin Moore, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. And stay with